Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India
prominent role in the semantics of English. Prepositions remarkably, you know, uh, little space is devoted to prepositions or directional adverbs, for example, forward in ELT course books produced in the UK or the USA. Because I am interested only in the meaning, I will use the term preposition to describe both parts of speech without wishing to suggest that they behave the same syntactically. Reference grammars, practice grammars and supplementary books of the phrasal verbs made easy sort frequently have small sections on prepositions, sometimes accompanied by simple pictures or diagrams. Of the 20 or so such books I have looked at recently, none attempts to present more than one or a very small set of meanings for any one preposition. So, you can see here, uh, the writer talks about how uh, prepositions are dealt with in the course books. So, this is here very little space is devoted to prepositions or directional adverbs in ELT course books produced in the UK or the US. So, even the context of review is you know highly specified. So, uh, you get a clear indication that the author is going to look at some course books, English language teaching course books produced in the UK or the USA and focus is what she calls prepositions or directional adverbs. Um, you can see here there is that some information is here uh, in you know given here in brackets. In some cases you know, this kind of information will be given as a footnote or an end note. So, we discussed you know you have some information, some um, clarification you feel you need to provide. Here, the writer you know um, gives a clarification that she is not going to distinguish between preposition and directional adverb, she is going to treat them as same. Uh, so, there is more clarification. So, this kind of you know clarification because of the uh, requirements of the journal has been given as part of the main text, but separated using brackets, you can also use as I said a footnote or an endnote. Continuing, however, a dictionary Sinclair 1987 goes to the other extreme. An entry for on for example, has 19 subsections with no attempt to explicitly highlight semantic relations between any of the various uses that are covered. The assumption both of ELT grammarians and lexicographers seems to be that the semantics of prepositions are too complex and systematic to warrant thorough investigation either in or out of the uh, classroom. Rather, prepositions are largely to be learnt narrow context by narrow context, often phrase by phrase. No doubt, there is some unavoidable rote learning to be done. I believe, however, that the collocational approach greatly underestimates the extent to which prepositional semantics is systematic. It thus leaves the student with far too much item by item learning to do. So, here you saw that the writer mentions 20 or so such books I have looked at recently, none attempts to present a you know systematic account of even a single proposition. So, the details are not given here. If readers are interested, they can uh, go back and uh, uh, consult these sources. Um, the writer here focuses on one particular uh, book, addiction, the, it is cited Sinclair 1987. So, the specific uh, issues are here given because a writer is clearly contesting this. So, this is here that the collocational approach greatly underestimates that is systematic. So, the writer is um, clearly not happy with this uh, approach which is prevalent in the previous works and is going to propose something different. So, this is how you know you do a review in your research paper. So, as I mentioned in a dissertation, uh, you will probably uh, you know if you were doing it, 
you will list all these 20 or box you know you give information you analyze you know each of uh, those using a particular framework so there will be a lot of details but in a research paper it is um, highly succinct you include only what is important to make your point so author's point is the previous approaches um, uh, encourage a lot of rote learning and they do not seem to recognize that uh, prepositional meaning is um, to some extent systematic. So, so only what is needed to make this point uh, only those things are mentioned in this review of uh, research. Moving on the next section is methodology. So, this section you know is very important for experts. They look at methodology and then they decide whether your study is trustworthy or not, whether you followed conventions, uh, whether your tools were you know in line with what has been you know used in the previous works. So, have you you know clearly controlled extraneous variables. So, all these uh, questions are very uh, crucial because these things clearly affect the outcomes. So, if your methodology has flaws then your outcomes you know um, we cannot trust. So, therefore, this section is very important. Also you know th this section you know you include all the details because if um, somebody else wants to replicate your study they should be able to do so. So, you clearly mention you know who your subjects were, what tools you used, how you used those tools, what kind of data you collected and um, what you did with that data. So, every minute aspect you include under research methodology. So, uh, this helps others replicate your research. Say for example, you worked with a group of uh, 20 students from urban areas, you know you taught them English using uh, stories and after 2 months there were significant improvements. So, if somebody wants to replicate you know they may uh, you know uh, use a group of students from rural areas. So, uh, these kinds of you know replication studies are possible if you uh, uh, you know give uh, uh, specific details about your methodology. So, uh, this includes your hypothesis, research questions, then information about participants, tools, procedure and uh, data collection. So, uh, many of these things we have already dealt with when we discussed uh, research report or even research proposal. Next is you know results and uh, discussion. So, um, here you interpret your data and you tell readers what the, that data means. Uh, in research context usually we talk of uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So, uh, descriptive statistics usually includes you know your mean, median, mode kind of scores. So, you are just you know describing things as they are. So, inferential means you interpret so what they mean. So, say you have got mean scores of two groups. So, that would be your descriptive statistics. If those you know two mean scores um, are their differences and those uh, differences are they significant that is what your inferential statistics will tell you. Let us look at a, an example now. So, uh, this is from a paper developing EFL learners metaphoric competence through cognitive oriented methods. So, there were two groups control group and experimental group with one group they used uh, 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 cognitive oriented methods that was experimental group. Um, um, so, if you look at it 
this is uh, there are two groups then there were pre test and post test so these are you know mean scores so they just represent and um, standard deviation scores are given in parenthesis so this is an example of descriptive statistics this is an example of inferential statistics so they have run um, you know t test and um, details about it are given so these tell you whether the, the these mean scores you got uh, mean something else so um, uh, a detailed discussion on you know descriptive stats and inferential stats is beyond the scope of this course but you can refer to uh, as any simple uh, statistics book and you get uh, more details the point is you include um, these details under your uh, results and discussion section acknowledgments so we have seen that you have a very detailed you know section um, on acknowledgments in a dissertation in a research paper this is very short you acknowledge only the most important people objects organizations say somebody who funded your research uh, you know somebody who helped you in significantly revising the paper uh, but did not directly contribute to actual writing so um, uh, so you have to be uh, more careful uh, when including you know names and uh, uh, institutes under acknowledgments uh, let us look at uh, an example here this is from uh, teaching English metaphors using cross linguistic awareness raising activities. See how um, the writers use acknowledgement section here. The work discussed here formed part of a project on metaphor in ELT conducted jointly by staff from teacher training colleges in the Sosonovich area of Poland and from the University of Birmingham. This was one of a series of joint projects between the two institutions made possible by the British Council Prince project. So, you are acknowledging uh, you know this collaboration uh, from other institutes also uh, uh, funding agency. So, uh, your acknowledgement section is even more specific in a research paper. The last section you know is called bio note. Um, so, here you include um, some information about yourself as a, an author. Let us look at this example. This is from do not keep them in the dark teaching metaphors to English language learners written by Dong. So, this bio note is about this person Yuren Dong is associate professor in the English education program at Queens College CUNY. Her professional interests include English teacher education and teaching English to linguistically and culturally diverse students. So, you briefly include uh, some information about your research areas or your significant contributions like books or path breaking papers among other things. So, today we have looked at a research paper and we saw that you know it can stem out of your dissertation, but it is more uh, you know uh, focused and um, it is more structured and it follows conventions even more rigorously. Thank you.